for tonight was nominated for Best Newcomer at the 2014 Edinburgh Fringe Festival and his Sydney comedy festival show, G.O.D. Gold Oil Drugs, is happening at the Factory Theatre on May 2nd. Please welcome Dane Baptiste. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's very, very nice to be here. I always want to make sure I say the right thing, especially on TV, because the real issue with political correctness and what you can say and what you can't say. Now, I don't like to patronise my audience. I can't come on stage or come on TV and be like, Hi, I'm Dane. Everything's okay. Shucks, I don't even see colour. Because then, how the fuck do you have a barbecue? <laughs> I don't even see colour, but my nan, on the other hand, sometimes she can be a bit racist. <laughs> And then they'll say something racist, and then they'll be like, but that's my nan, what you gonna do? I'm ever so cheeky. <laughs> yuck, yuck. <laughs> so, uh, I feel it's a bit of a cop out. I think if you really care about eradicating racism from our society, kill your nan. <laughs> kill your goddamn nan. I will slap your nan in the face on Christmas Day if she's racist to me. You don't see color, I don't see age. So, how about that? <laughs> that works out. It's fine. Uh, I feel like, you know, we should embrace more love. And uh, last time I was in Australia, uh, you guys were having a plebiscite on a gay marriage and Cooler has prevailed. She voted yes on the plebiscite, um, which is a great thing. And it's really strange that people are still opposed to the like, gay marriage. And you hear people say stuff like, how will I explain the birds and the bees to my kids? How do I explain the birds and the bees to my kids? In 2018, the birds and the bees, it's a very different conversation now. <laughs> to explain the birds and the bees to a kid now is a lot more like, well, Billy, here is a conversation about the birds and the bees. The bees are dangerously close to extinction due to habitat destruction. <laughs> and through their pollination process, they help out being the basis of our food chain. So if they do eventually die out, we will see massive devastation to our availability of food and global superpowers will begin to go to war for the dwindling resources. Then we'll see a mass influx of ecological and environmental migrants trying to escape the inevitable genocide as our bodies begin to pile up on our already polluted oceans. Anaerobic algae will begin to feed on the carrion. So when you think about it, Billy, Two dudes kissing is the least of your motherfucking worries. <laughs> you know, you find somebody that loves you in this world, you grab onto that with two hands. Like they say on the internet, if it's not like 90s r and I don't want it. And with that in mind, you guys remember the song No Scrubs by TLC? Yeah. Wasn't that a great song? So empowering for the ladies. I don't want no scrub. Scrub is the guy that can't get no love from me. And it would come on and there'd be rosé and Sauvignon Blanc and handbags flying through the club. It's an amazing environment for the ladies. Not so fun for the unemployed man. <laughs> that is not a nice song to hear when you don't have a bike. <laughs> and, you know, the song would get to the bridge and he'd be like, if you live at home with your mama, oh, yes, son, I'm talking to you. If you live at home with your mother, they're talking to you. But I have a question, TLC. What if I'm a full-time carer? <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm at home, because I'm taking care of my mother, because I love her dearly. Oh, I get it. Oh, so be cool. I'm supposed to leave her at home, lumbered with bedroom tax in London, which is virtually unaffordable, then go live with a bunch of strangers who still question my life choices, which my mother already does, but I get rice and peas and she does it. <laughs> and then they'll go on and be like, if you don't have a car and you're walking, oh, yes, son, I'm talking to you. If you don't have a car and you're walking, they are talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry, TLC. If me and my friends are concerned about our carbon footprint, <laughs> I'm not entitled to find love. There are a number of good reasons for two men being in the same car. Let's say we're going to Macca's. I can't put my drinks on the seats. If I break, they spill everywhere, ruin the upholstery. That's a two-man job. Everyone knows it. <laughs> What, I'm supposed to leave my house with my friends in four separate cars with petrol prices being through the roof? <laughs> then, if you go out in London, you've got to pay a congestion charge four times. You pull up at the club, you've got to pay to park four times. And if we're all driving, then guess what we can't do? We can't drink, because there's no designated driver when you're all driving, which means now I've got to pay, like, $20 for a cranberry juice in this club. And we've been planning this night for a month, DLC! <laughs> oh, so fine, that's right. I'll get a car and be cool, and it'll have to be an amphibious vehicle, because while we keep driving and polluting the earth, then we'll be driving away from polar bears. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> Love the ladies, not so fond of the song. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Dane Baptiste. Thank you. Dane Baptiste, everybody. Thanks, Thank man.